Hi, welcome to another tutorial on ArcGIS. Today I will show you how to delineate a catchment using a DEM uh, with the help of ArcGIS as our primary GIS tool. So first of all, you can see that I have loaded up my DEM. If you would like to know how to download a DEM, I have already prepared a tutorial for that and I will, I will put the link in the description below. Uh, you can first study that tutorial, how to download an Aster DEM uh, from the NASA website. And here you can see that I have already loaded up the DEM into ArcGIS interface. So for this tutorial, I will be using the Hydrology toolbox, uh, which actually comes in built with ArcGIS. So the first thing that you would need to do is after you load the DEM, you will have to go to uh, the Arc toolbox and under Spatial Analyst Tools, uh, you will see that this option called Hydrology. So before we are actually able to use this tool, first of all, you need to go to Customize and under Extensions, you will see that uh, you have some unchecked uh, unchecked extensions. In case if you have already checked uh, all of these extensions, then you're good to go. But in case if you haven't, you especially need to have the Spatial Analyst uh, extension activated for the, for the process that we are going to do today. So after you activate that, I'm going to click OK, Close. After we download the DEM, we have to actually fill the sinks. So first, we need to click on this fill, just double click. And as the input surface raster, you're going to put the raw DEM that you downloaded from, uh, from the website. So you just drag this and drop. And for the out output surface raster, you can actually specify the, the output location, but for, for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is and click OK. So what happens in this step is actually if there are any sinks present in the in the raw DEM, this algorithm will actually fill up those uh, sinks so that we can proceed with the, with the with the next steps that we need to do. So as you can see, we already created a filled DEM. Uh, the next step would be actually, now you can see that uh, you have two, two rasters. The first one is the raw DEM that we already had before, and now you have a filled DEM. So I'm just going to uncheck this one because we won't be needing that anymore. And the next thing that you need to do is actually you need to create a flow direction raster. So after fill, the second step would be to create a flow direction raster. So you double click on this one. And as the input to this one, we should put the field DEM, not the raw DEM. So you just drag this one and drop it over here. And I will correct the name uh, just to just to make it a little bit clear, flow direction, and press OK. So it might take some time to create the flow direction raster. And you see that we already have the flow direction raster now. Now, what does these different colors indicate? As you can see over here, uh, under the flow direction raster, you see uh, a few numbers 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. So just before going into the next step, I would like to give you some idea about this flow direction raster. And if you just wonder what these numbers mean, I would just quickly uh, explain to you what exactly these numbers mean. Now here I have actually come to the help of ArcGIS and it says uh, how, how does the flow direction works. And here and here I would like to bring to your attention this uh, direction coding. As you can see, uh, these different colors and different numbers indicate directions. So one is actually to the, uh, to, the, to the eastern side and 16 is to the western side and 64 is actually to the northern side and 4 is to the southern side and like so. So if you just come back to uh, the flow direction raster you created and if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that these individual pixels actually take the color which is represented by each of these colors which also has the number which explains you actually the direction of the flow. So that's actually the meaning of this uh, flow direction raster. So our next step would actually be to create the flow accumulation raster. So after we guide the flow to has its own direction based on the topography, the next step is actually we need to see the flow accumulation points. So you just double click on the flow accumulation and as the input for this one, we just drag and drop the flow direction raster. And 
as the name of the accumulation uh, raster, just give the name to be flow ACC and click OK. All right, now you can see that our flow accumulation raster is complete, uh, but it's not actually quite visible yet uh, unless we do some modifications in the symbology. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click on the flow accumulation raster and I'll just uncheck these because we won't be needing them for the time being. And you go to properties of the flow accumulation raster and go to symbology. And instead of using a stretched option, uh, let's, use a, let's use a classified option. And uh, by default, you can see that the number of classes that it gets classified to is five, but I'm going to change this to two, and I will explain you the reason why. And you can see actually now we are, classif now we are, uh, we are trying to classify the whole thing into two, uh, two colors. So let's go to classify and Instead of having such a broad range for black color, as you can see over here, I'm going to assign uh, in a way that it will show us in black color the accumulations which are quite small from zero, let's say up to 25,000. And click OK. So from zero to 25,000, which corresponds to actually very low accumulations, it will be represented in black color. And on top of black, since white is going to be quite uh, easily visible, I'm going to leave the rest of the accumulations to be in white color. Now, when I click apply, you can see actually all the flow accumulations uh, which corresponds to which correspond to uh, this this particular range gets very uh, easily highlighted. Now, if you decide to go a little bit low on this number, for example, instead of going with twenty-five thousand, if I were to put just 1000 and click OK. You can see it actually starts showing us all this, all the uh, very localized accumulations as well instead of showing the, the main river lines. And if you zoom in, you can see that all the sub reaches are also now visible. But this is this looks a little bit messy and I'm interested in only having the, the major river lines highlighted. So I'm going to stick with, uh, let's say around 25,000. And the rest, I would like to represent that in white color. So for this example, let's assume that I need to have my catchment outlet somewhere over here. And I would like to know what is the, cor uh, the, the corresponding uh, contributing drainage area for that, uh, that particular outlet from this particular subcatchment. So what I'm going to do is first I need to create a new shape file and define my define the exact location of my outlet and make sure that that outlet point is located exactly on top of this cell but not outside the range of this uh, this white color cells so in order to do that you have to create a new shape file and there's a, there's also another tu tutorial where i have explained you how to create new shape file but i will explain to you again uh, first you go to catalog and you select the place where you need to save your new shape file so let's say if I would like to save it over here, uh, you have to right click and go to new and a new shape file. And I'm going to call this as outlet of the catchment. And the feature type is going to be a point. And uh, here we, it's quite important that we define the correct projection system. And for this tutorial, I'm using the 1984 uh, geographic coordinate system. So I'm going to select that. It's WGS 1984. And click OK. Right, now we are almost ready to create our shape file. Now let's go to this editor and click start editing and click outlet catchment. Okay, go to editor again, editing windows, create features. I'm going to get rid of the arc toolbox. 
and click on this outlet catchment and under the construction tool you have to select point and as you can see since I'm trying to identify the contributing drainage uh, basin for this particular river branch I'm going to zoom in to the point where this river connects to the main river and I'm going to place my point somewhere over here okay that's done let's go to editor and click stop editing and save your edits okay now you can see you have your point which we call as a pore point now get rid of this create features panel and now we have to go with this watershed option double click on the watershed option and as the input you have to drag and drop the in the flow direction raster and here it's asking us an input raster or a feature pore point data so we already created the pore point data and our pore point is actually the catchment outlet so i'm going to drag this one and drop it over here and click ok now i'm going to zoom it out so when it creates the the catchment it will be easily visible for you all right now you can see that we already created the the catchment and it shows us actually the, the contributing area for this catchment outlet point based on this DEM right and right now this catchment is actually still in the format of a raster if you go over here and if you open the attributes table you can see that it's actually in, in the form of a raster for other analysis purposes normally it's required that you convert this raster into a polygon so you can do other uh, analysis such as calculating the area or uh, based on your requirements so what we do over here is we go to the search panel and we search raster to polygon and you can see and as you can see the first option is converting converting a raster into a polygon so i'm going to drag this raster and drop it over here and now and now i think it's clear for you that this raster corresponds to the raster which got generated uh, based on the topography of the DEM and I'm going to simplify the polygons as well what this does is actually in the in the at the edges of the catchment if you do not uncheck this one you will still see the the boundaries of the of the pixels in sort of rectangular format but if you click on this one it will sort of simplify the polygons as well so and then click OK all right now you can see you successfully created your first watershed so that's about it for this tutorial and here I showed you how to create one watershed but but in case if you need to create multiple watersheds at one time uh, you don't have to do this process over and over again there is another easy quick and an easy way and I will show you how to do that in the next tutorial thank you